Hello everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another flea market video. Yeah, if you watched the last flea market video, well, that was the Saturday of that weekend and this is the Sunday. So another flea market, also just one, uh, the one uh, at Biestdorf Center, so Berlin Biestdorf is always big enough to justify just doing one. Yeah, I could always do others afterwards. But also here that day in the uh, afternoon, I, I had something else planned. So I just stuck to this one flea market, was not able to film uh, like the haul or whatever that exact day, no. Um, so you're gonna see all of that already cleaned and uh, kind of researched, etc. So let me tell you, the Saturday was so Barbie heavy. I found like nine dolls or something uh, already. Clearly this day I did not find a single Barbie that I picked up, but there's still Barbie fashions and some other cute stuff. So let's have some fun. So uh, I started with this box of uh, action figures and I know this vendor, it's mostly they have the good stuff on the table and underneath the broken stuff but I saw that there was Masters of the Universe stuff. This is an original 80s uh, Ram Man um, but it's not really a character I'm totally into. I would just pick him up if he would be really cheap. So I was hoping because this is the box with the broken parts. There you see I think isn't that even a... Uh, I don't know it could also be from the new adventures of He-Man but broken so I was hoping that this box uh, the action figures would be cheap. Uh, let me already tell you, they were not. He still wanted 10 euro for this broken um, Ram Man. But well, yeah, I, I still filmed for you. I think this was, this is a Green Lantern. I don't know. I'm not that knowledgeable with, you know, superhero stuff. Especially if it's not Marvel. <laughs> so DC is not my thing. Uh, there was definitely more. Um, it's a mix of like 90s. This is kind of a Power Rangers knockoff. I think this big one in the front is might be a modern Beast Man. This is uh, He Man from the 2000X, so like 2003. So it's a mix. And this is, for example, yeah, late 80s, like um, new adventures, but they were all expensive. So as it was a pretty rainy day, some of the footage is from the garage. So some sellers were there, and this is because it's darker. You can see it. Um, yeah, a G2 My Little Pony. Um, not a super special one because I do have it, but I mean, I, I decided to grab it again and, um, yeah, definitely rummage through the stuff from the same box because like with one pony, there might be more. Um, so you never give up hope. I don't remember if there was anything super interesting in there. But yeah, it was not a really nice day, but this flea market like Beastop is really, really good. Also for bad weather, because they have this option to put all of the vendors in the like garage. So oh, just a, a fakey pony. Um, so this footage is like half and half from upstairs and from downstairs. So yeah, I think, I mean, it was 50 cents. You see it like, of course I grab a G2 pony for 50 cents, even though I have it already. Well, the very first thing I found was a My Little Pony. What would be better than a Barbie? Of course, My Little Pony. <laughs> it's not a G1, but it's a Generation 2 My Little Pony. And um, I have this exact pony already like four times. So it's my fifth morning glory of like exactly this version. And I have like, like three or four more other morning glories. Um, if you have been around on my channel for a little bit longer and you might remember, yes, it's kind of my generation 2 pony. I always find Morning Glory and I kind of army build her. So I would never leave a Morning Glory, no matter the condition. And she is in okay condition, just like someone cut her bangs. So there's like, she, the, these ponies have a forelock and this is like cut. Uh, the rest of the hair is super smooth. She's not discolored, no, almost no like a rub of the symbol, and she has her uh, gems. So now you can see Generation Two ponies. They have these gems in the eyes. They look very different to Generation One ponies, um, but I still love them. They are just not, I mean, not as common. Um, 
to be found anymore, same as G1s, but every now and then I find G2 ponies <laughs> and it's the same pony again. I always find this one. This is one from the very first set released in 1997. So this is like the generation that um, started in the late um, 90s in the US just ran for about a year or two, um, was longer going on in, the, in uh, European countries. But yeah, what should I say? Morning Glory from the, like, whatever this first set was called, Friends, something with Friends. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not that um, knowledgeable with the kind of release sets. It's a little bit confusing in G3 for me and also in G2, but like, yeah. Morning Glory 1997. And you see it here. This is what someone cut. It's there's still a little bit there, but it would be a longer strand of hair, so. Well, here I stopped obviously because of the dolls in the box and to be honest, it's not even such a bad um, array of dolls. This is the Teresa, I, I don't know which one. This is definitely a 90s Ken, um, but none of them really spoke to me. This is something newer. There's also one of those big uh, animatronic dolls. But this, this was like piquing my interest. I could see through the back, there's fashion pieces and I could especially see one um, that, that yeah, it's, it's a 90s fashion piece from Barbie, from Skipper. And now the lady helped me to open it up because I just had one hand free. Um, so I was hoping that there would be some really, really good Barbie items in there. But then I was like, oh, not everything is really for me. So I asked her if I could just get a couple of the pieces. This is what I already saw through the bag. It's from, from a Skipper. Um, so I just like rummaged through it and decided to get a couple of the things. So sadly less than I was hoping, but a pair of shoes that could go to Lady Lovely Locks, a couple of Barbie items. This could go to Dr. Barbie, but I'm not sure. And something from Sailor Moon. Let's, let's see. So yeah, you saw this vendor I stopped because oops, there were dolls and um, I was not particularly interested in any of them. They were newer or like, I don't know, whatever. But I saw that she had a, a bag of fashions and I looked through it and also I couldn't pick up the whole bag because not everything was really interesting to me. But I picked up a couple of the things, also a couple of the accessories. And this is a nice little haul. I think it makes sense to pin the camera down. So you have at least a little bit more of a detailed look. Um, first of all, this is what I already could see through the back. I was really hoping it would not just be this dress again, but again, uh, not the trousers or like little shorts to it and not the undershirt because that's actually a top underneath or like a t-shirt underneath. This is from um, the Pet Pal Skipper from 1991. I do have it already. But whatever, yeah. <laughs> um, and we have this one, immediately recognized it. This is from the Foam and Color Barbie, uh, a Barbie line that only had three Barbies. All of them were blonde, but each of them came with a different kind of color dress. So there's a pink, a yellow and a blue one. And it came with different colored foam. You would put foam in the hair and that would kind of color the hair, dye, not really dye, it's not permanent, but this Barbie would come with blue foam and you could make the hair blue, so. Yeah, foam color from 1995. Then this skirt, I have it already like two, two, like twice at least, maybe three times. This is from the Barbie and the Beat line. So one of the, or disco Barbie in, in Europe, one of the lines with um, glow in the dark fashion, very, very late 80s, early 90s, like from just some 89. And this is the skirt from Barbie, it's pink lace. This dress I honestly uh, have not found out yet. Uh, it is an original Barbie piece. It has the uh, 90s Barbie logo, but still in uh, purple. So that means it's like, um, like let's say around 1993, four or five, around that time. Um, the page that I use for identifying Barbie fashions did not have this one listed, but again, this page is also not complete. So um, normal, I I'm guessing that there was maybe a little bolero to it or some other accessory. It's a cute dress, just haven't found out. Well, this is not a Barbie dress. <laughs> this is actually the um, 
yeah, Sailor Jupiter dress. So it's a Sailor Moon doll. Um, Sailor Jupiter, you know, the brown haired one, the little bit more sporty girl. I've never watched Sailor Moon, I just know general things about it and uh, I just picked it up because I recognized it. I do have another Sailor Moon dress. I have, uh, I think, the one from Sailor Venus. Uh, I've never come across one of the dolls, uh, but I, I just went ahead and picked it up because I could recognize it. I think it comes from the Eagle dolls. A uh, German company produced them in 1999. So yeah, very cute, nice quality. If someone at one point needs it or if I come across the doll or who knows, I just uh, picked it up because I thought it's cool. Then this, I was really thinking this might be from Dr. Barbie. I have Dr. Barbie, but you know, it's from Pet Dr. Barbie. Uh, you can you can see this. Uh, it has more. It looks a tiny bit like a paw print with these dots over the bee. Yeah, and Dr. Barbie had the same kind of um, um, bag, but with a different logo. And this is clearly one from Pet Dr. Barbie. But anyways, I will give it uh, to my uh, Dr. Barbie. <laughs> um, this Barbie was released in 1996. Then we have it's actually my favorite find of this little lot, these shoes. <laughs> so um, these could either go to either a Lady Lovely Locks doll. That's definitely what I will use them for. I still have a couple of my Lady Lovely Locks dolls that are in need of pink shoes. Um, maybe just one, I don't know if I'm missing really two, but how, I mean, wow, a, a pair. But also Skipper came with this type of shoes sometimes, even pearlized sometimes so it could, it could also be from from skipper um this <laughs> um this is actually also i recognize it immediately that it, it must go uh to one of the special collections um accessory packs from barbie from the late 90s it's from 89 and this really comes from one uh, like special collections accessory pack with lots of these green plasticky things shoes and other stuff here we've got the handbag um, it is from the special collections number 22296, if that's interesting for you. <laughs> You've got one of those pink visors. Uh, I always pick those up, different colors, etc. So this might have come from Glitter Hair Barbie or something similar. And then we've got this. Um, yeah, this is a My Little Pony item. This is not a Barbie or anything else. This is from the generation one of My Little Pony. This came from the baby buggy. I do have it, but it's actually a piece that I separately at one point picked up from my friend Mikuru. So now I found it myself at the flea market. And uh, yeah, the pillow from the baby buggy from 84, 85. that one the other ones are a little bit on the higher numbers but like as a child I listened up until number 30 or something so, so the 127 I, I don't know any of them the 32 33 I don't like these covers I prefer the older ones but um, definitely gonna ask for these Wendy gets the tapes oh my god Oh, I had no idea that Süda also had cassette tapes. Oh, I want to listen to that. That was a German TV show. Not really just with horses, but like with all animals also. A cast of, you know, young actors uh, on, on a kind of farm or something like that. I, don't, I definitely remember that. What else? The next pickup were these cassette tapes. It's been a while since I picked up a whole bunch of cassette tapes. Um, four of them are from the Wendy line, so one of my favorite uh, types of uh, audio children's uh, audio cassette tapes. And then I picked up one from Süderhof, which I'm not really super familiar with, but let's start with the Wendy ones. Um, 
Wendy is a German um, like magazine with you know comics about this girl Wendy who lives with her family at the um, Gestüt, so at the farm, I don't know what you call it, where they where they breed horses, <laughs> and um, yeah, she has her own horses, and there's all these different adventures that she goes on with her family, with her friends, etc., etc. And I love these cassette tapes of these stories as a child. These are a little bit later ones, so you see they are number 27, for example. I think mine, where I, I in the in the footage, I think I said until 30, but I think until 25. I had as a child. They were then around from 98 or 97 or something. So these are a little later than the 98, 99, 2000, more like these types. And here already the cover changed, but I was still interested in this one because uh, this is kind of a continuation of a cassette tape I had as a child. There is this guy that uh, Wendy falls in love. He's, uh, he's from the US and he has to leave her, but here in this cassette, apparently he comes back. I have not listened to it, but I'm really excited about this one. Um, the sad thing is that one of the cassette tapes, it was in here, but it was broken, so I couldn't listen to it. I started listening to it, but you know, the, um, the tape inside uh, was super, super crumbled, or I don't know what you call it, really um, like folded, and uh, you couldn't listen to it. I was pulling it out completely and very carefully getting it in again into the cassette um, so it was not like upside down and all of that it was really but like the whole tape was already like you know so so like so many folds and creases in them and yeah you couldn't listen to it it just like got like stuck in the cassette again so this one sadly i cannot listen to but whatever um i'm still keeping the cover uh, the other ones this one i have listened to it works, let's hope the others work again also, but they they look okay. So I was just not really taking care of looking at the tapes at the flea market. And then I picked up this one. Um, it's also a very German thing. Um, here, Neues vom Süderhof was a TV show, um, live action, so not cartoon, of, you know, children at this, you know, um, that were living together with lots of animals and horses at this kind of farm. Um, I it was around 1991 1992 when the first like seasons aired that was before my time so I was not watching any live action stuff at that point um, um, but I'm pretty sure I watched reruns of it later or there was like kind of a reboot soft reboot of the of the show in like 1995 until 1997 but I remember watching a little bit of it but then also the kind of TV show that followed it like um, Kinder vom Alstertal I think I remember that's more like 98 that's when I was like 10 years old um, but it was similar and, and I'm hoping that these cassettes are maybe also good I don't know I don't know if they just took the TV show and put a narrator on it then it might not be my K like my, my type of cassette tapes because I don't like that too much um, for example the turtles cassette tapes did that um, or maybe it's a new production like directly for the cassettes not listened to it yet but I'm interested in it um, noise from Süderhof okay so this cassette is from 93 I think yeah 1993 Well, you always gotta stop at a box of plushies, although I'm not the biggest plush collector. <laughs> I thought from far away that that green-haired girl might have been a Rainbow Bright doll, but it was not. Uh, yeah, a couple of colorful plushies, but nothing vintage, nothing that I could identify, nothing that I'm into. And let me tell you, I filmed a lot of stuff that day where I did not find anything. Uh, this uh, vendor here, is this elderly couple where I sometimes even find ponies and stuff like that. Um, here I'm checking out this little Puffalum style plush. Uh, it might have been from, from the company Gegu because my friend Cotton Candy Kittens told me those, the ones produced by Gegu in that style, are worth a little more. People are really searching for them, but I just don't like them. So yeah, put it back in the box and I don't even know if this is from the company Gegu. Um, but this vendor is always worth checking out. So what else do we have there? Went 
to the table and what do I see? Well, not original ponies, but there's something. Yeah, so, yeah, and a fakie. And another fakie, I think I've seen that fakie for a hundred times, but um, this little ballerina fakie and this little dog are kinda interesting to me. I don't know what that is. It's too small for Barbie, but it's probably from Evie Love or something like that. Yeah, so this little dog, although I already have it, <laughs> uh, I decided to get. And the pony as well. Ta-da! So really not a Barbie day. <laughs> uh, more like a pony day, although these are also not really ponies that I would like to find. Um, uh, this is one of the Simba beauty friends and this is another one of the Simba, you know, fakey ponies, one of the baby ballerina ponies from Simba. Um, these I absolutely love, but the crazy thing is at this exact flea market, just like half a year ago, I already found this exact one. So this is a double for me, although it's a little bit of a better condition. Um, this is, you know, Simba is a German toy company uh, who is doing is doing and was doing for all the time uh, like lots of like knockoffs of toy lines so uh, lots of fakey ponies they have like a knockoff barbie so to say the steffi love and etc already here in the 90s so this is from the 90s early 90s they were knocking off a lot of ponies and also you know some little pretties or the lady lovely Locks pets or whatever so also other animals they had this one line they called the beauty friends of a couple of dogs and cats and um, I think this big one is also was also available in pink, so I wish I wish I would have found it in pink because I do have this blue one already this time. But it, it comes with the original ribbon. There's even the original like rubber band underneath. I don't want to do anything about that. It still looks good. It never had longer hair. This is it has always been with this kind of short curly hairstyle. Um, here's the tail. Not in a bad condition, but also, I mean, they, the hair they used, I think is polypropylene to begin with, so it's not super good. Uh, super cute pose, I like them. Uh, I just wish it would have been a different one that I found, but I couldn't leave it. And then this one, uh, where I'm not 100% sure if it's also from Zimba, but it's very likely because um, this type of baby ballerina fakie was produced by Zimba. Um, in the early 90s as well as, as, as this one, but I've never seen it with these colors I'm more familiar because I, I had one of them as a child uh, That's also the reason why I picked it up. Although I'm not huge into fakey ponies uh, With this one I was like, yeah, I, I know for a fact I had a real uh, Hasbro uh, My little pony a baby ballerina pony um, But I had also a fake one and this is the exact same mold of this uh, baby ballerina fakey uh, it's also very similar to the original Hasbro ones, but it's not exactly the same mold. Um, I just know that the ones in the early 90s, I think from Simba, they were always kind of monochromatic. So if you had a pink pony with a dark pink body, it had also pink hair or lighter pink hair or something like that. I don't know, like a like pink body with purple hair, but so I cannot 100% prove that this is from this um, Simba Ballerina Pony line, but very likely, you know. They always kind of mix it up. So they have a diaper that's painted on a little bit like the, um, you know, the Fancy Pants Baby Ponies, but it has the movable um, limbs. Not very well movable, but I mean, it, it kind of works. It, yeah. uh, as same as the Baby Ballerina Ponies, I think. The hoof mold is could be the exact same one because they have the exact same ribbons here. Let me get one so you can compare it. Here is an example of an original um, Fancy Pants Baby. So this is the idea of the painted on diapers. This is an original one and this is kind of what they went with. Not as detailed and cute, but I mean, yeah. And then they transformed it also into a <laughs> baby ballerina pony. And here's what, what you can see. They, they are them they move so much better and like the molds and the, they have leotards here they they kind of messed it up in my opinion because they just have diapers and what is this supposed to be they should have painted the whole body and not just the diaper then it would make more sense but whatever uh, you can see here the it's, it's also 
also not really the same mold, but it's very similar. Um, so Simba is very good at knocking off <laughs> uh, successful toy lines. So yeah, but it's not bad. The hair quality, yeah, it's it's a little dry, etc. But it's polypropylene hair. What what you're gonna expect for that? I mean, it looks pretty amazing still so <laughs> I'm not mad that I picked this one up because I, I, I definitely know this one was my childhood pony by the way not exactly this one but I had baby um, soft steps and I had one of these I think a complete purple one or a complete blue one or something like that yeah uh, the next uh, thing I want to show you is actually something I didn't film uh, because it just went so fast there was this um, little like elderly lady she had put together a couple of Barbie outfits um, she said yeah they are original 70s uh, they were not most of them were definitely not original uh, they might have been 70s but they were more like clo clone doll outfits and um, also self-made ones because a couple of them were like knitted or crocheted or something but I spotted she had put together this as like one outfit uh, I was like wait this is something original I picked it up she wanted like one euro per outfit and it went all just so fast that I kind of forgot to get out my camera and I didn't want to go back and hey could I actually also film it's like nah so I didn't film it you can see it here um, it's from the 1981 Pink and Trip Pretty Barbie. A very iconic, iconic, iconic early 80s Barbie. And she was like dressed, this is one of the first dolls I would say can come in this like super soft pink all over look, etc. It's not a complete outfit sadly, but I have the trousers. I have the cape, such a wonderful fabric. And then it has this like, um, trim of like fake fur, little ribbon in the front, so it's like a cape. Um, it comes with the kind of a stole. You would put Barbie's arms in here and she would have them around the shoulder and it's like a scarf, but also with her arms in it. It's, it's a kind of an interesting construction. Sadly, I'm missing the top. There would also be a strap top, pink with a, um, golden dots on it. And it also came with a long skirt, so you could either decide to put her in pants or the skirt. And it would also have a hat. So there's a couple of pieces missing, definitely. There's another short ruffle, similar to this one. Um, but I have a couple of the pieces. Um, this was also in here. I'm pretty sure this is not Barbie. This is A, not belonging to this year. I mean, I could, could see why she put it together because it has the same vibe and the same colors. But I mean, what is this supposed to be? It's more like a skirt for a bigger doll. So I haven't found out, but maybe it goes to, you know, something like a little miss or something around that size of a doll because you can open it up in the back. It has, um, you know, I, I could imagine this being Mattel because it has the late 90s um, um, snap buttons. And this looks like a little tutu. Maybe it is little miss. I haven't even really checked. Um, so I don't know, but about this, I'm really happy. Another bag of plushies. Well, 99% there's nothing for me in there, but you gotta check it out because I always remember I even found a Polly Pocket once in one of those plushie bags. Um, this little um, box also looked interesting, at least a little bit, but mostly it's like cheapo. Uh, ah, there's even the Fisher Price telephone, but I do have it for my Toy Story collection. This even is an original like 90s Hasbro wrestling figure. Um, I'm not into them and I think at the bottom there's another one, but I mean if you're uh, like someone who collects those uh, action figures, Hasbro wrestling figures are thought after, so I could have picked it up, but I left it. <laughs> Barbie, um, you know, boutique thing. I have one of the Monica hats to it. I don't know if I need it. Oh, there's one of these. It 
82 Mattel, yeah, this is one of those. But I don't need it and I don't have space for it. It's like you would present your <laughs> um, jewelry in it and put a hat on it and stuff like that. It's one of those small boutique standees, but like no. But this one I will ask for. It's one of the shaggy doggy mummy babies. Yeah, very much per coincidence. I discovered this little shaggy doggy in uh, one of those like boxes at the bottom. You saw it, I just kneed down, looked for this, um, there was this Barbie uh, boutique standy thing, uh, early 80s, uh, recognized it, didn't pick it up because this is something I really have no space for, I don't know where to put it, uh, left it, but this little doggy was in there. This was 50 cents and I can never leave them. This is a kind of a fakey line. Um, they are kind of called shaggy doggy and mommy. I mean, often they came with a bigger dog, the mommy, and this is more like a baby, uh, but they came also separate. So that's why I call them shaggy doggy. Um, they are supposed to be squeaking. This one is not, I mean, it has a hole in the bottom, but I mean, all I can get out of it is, <laughs> not really. Um, and they, they, I don't know, it's, to me, it's, I'm, I'm not, like, I don't know what company made them. Maybe I should just look up a carded example if I find one online. Um, but they are clearly kind of a knockoff of um, the Flappy Dogs, which were a kind of a movie and a toy line, which, like, the movie was definitely made by Disney. Shaggy Dog, Shaggy, um, Flappy Dogs. Um, but the only toys that were made for that were um, plushies, bigger sized plushies with yarn hair, but they had a very similar look. They just never made like, like, you know, vinyl toys. And these are like, you know, there's a body underneath, like a My Little Pony or a Ficky Elephant or whatever. Um, but in, a, in this style of dog, there's different faces. This is the one where it's like the tongue sticking out to the side and they are rooted with yarn hair. So they are very similar in the look to, to the Flappy Dogs. But kind of unique because the real Flappy Dogs never had a toy line with these small uh, vinyl toys. And I like I really like them. Here and there you find them. Uh, they are definitely from the, you know, I don't know, 80s, late 80s, something like that. Um, I have like two big ones. And the cool thing is I find them definitely in different colors because there's a pink one, I've got a orange one and a little yellow one. I've got a blue one. That's definitely better than, you know, when I always find the same colors, for example, for these fakey elephants, I always find them in flesh tone or in um, yeah, green. So here we've got the different color. I think this is discolored because when you look underneath, there it gets a little more blue, but not by a lot. So I will not change this. It was super filthy when I found it. Sticky, filthy, but I washed it. Everything is clean now and it's it's just a super cute, cute little fakey toy for my little fakey shelf. And another bag of plushies. At least I tried. Yeah, and some baby toys. I'm also just not really knowledgeable in terms of plush. I mean, I know the pastel ones from the 90s, etc. But other than that, I don't know what's worth something. This um, looked promising. I saw that Polly Pocket. I think it's a puzzle, but it's with a design from the more like 2000s or even 2010. So not, not, not interesting to me. Um, this girl clearly liked horses. So like, oh, are there maybe some ponies? Um, no, nothing. But delicious cupcakes, I think. <laughs> or muffins, at least. <laughs> no, I didn't buy any of them. So I strolled over to the next vendor with some more plushies. There was a lot of plushies that day, but like none of those plush boxes was anything interesting. Some porcelain dolls. Well, I have found Lady Lovely Locks in boxes with porcelain dolls. So you never know. Uh, what was that? Another vendor with a box of plushies. Yep. 
Uh, these are definitely old. These are definitely 80s, like maybe early 90s, but um, maybe even GDR. This one with a rubber face is one from the former GDR. So this box then to me is more interesting at least, but still I don't think that there was anything interesting in there. I mean, always, if you see something, uh, interesting tell tell me in the comments down below I oh, yeah, are these dolls I don't know what they are called they're cute and they're definitely from the 80s don't know if this was really a line or just a type of, of uh, doll that was produced and yeah you see it sometimes you're like oh toys and then you're already just with the first look you see there's nothing um, here I was kind of interested because I saw this big is it a Care Bear? I don't know. Is it just a fake? Or is it... I don't know what era of Care Bears this would be if it is a real one. So I just had a quick look if there would be anything interesting in, in that box. But spoiler, no. <laughs> and yeah, sometimes I'm checking out children's books. I always hope to find, you know, My Little Pony one. But oh, what's that? Oh, that's a Peppermint Rose book. Peppermint Rose is also a Mattel... Uh, doll line from the like early 90s I have one doll but I also do already have this book so I, I did not want to pick it up again One of my colleagues is collecting these QPs. Maybe I take it for her. <laughs> I mean, if it's cheap enough. up this Cupid doll. Hmm. You have never seen one of these on my channel because I don't actually like them a lot. No, I don't. Um, I know that they are collectors of them. Um, people often also that are more into the you know 50s toys or something, they like them. Um, you sometimes find them at flea markets often more with the vintage or uh, vintage uh, with the you know antique vendors then they charge a lot for them uh, why did i pick this one up i will not keep it it's for one of my colleagues it's for camilla and um, i discovered that she's also like into toys same as i am but we have a little bit of a different interest so her main collection are these cupies uh, she also has a couple of ones that are more collectible very bigger ones etc um, but I always thought whenever I find one I will just pick it up for her this is probably a new one it has very flimsy like squishy uh, material but I also cannot really find out so here even like it's, it's kind of you know the eyes are printed a little bit like uh, wonky it has a little bit of blue stuff on here which I have not been able to get rid of although I'm bleaching it for a while the blue stuff at the cheek is gone and here's Ah, just a tiny bit left but I don't know if I will ever be able to get this off uh, what are they actually these QP dolls well the history goes pretty way back because the first ones that were produced and called kind of QP 
um, were from 1913. They were even produced in Germany, in Thüringen, um, but they they were like kind of designed by a US designer, a woman called uh, Rose O'Neill. Uh, she just designed these, you know, little naked babies. Um, they were made out of porcelain at that point or like celluloid and uh, kind of production switched over to, you know, hard plastic at one point in the 40s. So they go way, way back. I think most popular um, they were like in the kind of time shortly after the Second World War uh, in Japan where they were also produced at that point. So those are the especially collectible ones. I think the big ones, the ones made in Japan, there's a lot of different ones. There's even ones that have hair. They all do not always look exactly like this. There's also one, some that look a little bit different, but they, they are also always kind of recognizable by this kind of, you know, naked baby body, kind of these faces, these hands, these like, like little petals, I don't know. Um, so, and I, you know, I think this is just a knockoff. Um, whatever, I could not find out. I think there are still some that come on card that are still new produced. It doesn't have any marking, but she was happy when I told her that I picked one up. It was just one euro. She can have it and I could at least show you one in my videos. So if you are very much into them and you know more about them, please don't hesitate to tell me anything you want in the comments down below or if there's a website about them or whatever. But I think this is just a cheapy knockoff one, but it is a QP. <laughs> I remember this toy line. I have a, a two or one other of these. I don't remember. They are like late 90s. What were they called? Puppy something. But they also had fakies, so I think this could also be just a fake of that. Because I don't see a company at all. It should, it should have a company on it. Honestly, I don't want it. It's always like little dogs with brushable tails and like like a fuzzy ears. I think this is not one of the real ones. And also the eyes are like... Meh. Okay, so we have After High and Monster High and some, I don't know what, fake Barbies and new Barbies and Steffi and blah. Not interesting. I think this is a Bratzilla. That's cool. Cool, cool. But not cool enough. <laughs> LOL, blah blah blah. What's this? She looks like a fake monster, hi, or what? I don't know, with a ship. Maybe she's real, I don't know. Her face looks just so strange. I have no idea. 
and I almost wanted to leave, then I found this vendor. <laughs> Well, she said the whole box is two euro. Uh, do I need that? Don't see many Barbie things. I mean, most of it is, I think, Peter. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Secret Hearts Barbie, I need that, definitely. Ich weiß aber nicht, ob ich die ganze Kiste brauche. Ist es, es, ich weiß aber nicht, ob ich die ganze Kiste brauche. Ist es, wäre es auch okay, wenn ich mir ein paar Sachen raussuche bloß? Oder? Ich brauche davon nicht mehr. Das ist so dieses... Hm. Die Puppen sind schon weg, ja? ja, ja. Uh, the first box wasn't even that interesting. I was more expecting to find anything in this first box because I saw there was a 90s um, Nakoma, so Pocahontas friend, so a Disney doll in there by Mattel. But other than that, no. But haha, on top of the table, oops, there were all these fashion pieces. And she really, she really said, you can have this whole box for like two euro and this whole box for five euro. But typical me, I'm not always interested in all of that. Oh my goodness, can the cupid please stand? Um, that's why I like <laughs> rummaged through this whole box uh, for quite a while uh, with camera and without camera so that I picked up only the pieces that were interesting to me and I got all of that for like two euro or something. I don't, I don't remember what it was. It was really cheap. Or was, it, was it even just one euro? I cannot remember. But like when she wanted this whole box with the accessories for two euros, I think I just paid one euro for all of these things because I still left a lot of pieces in, in the box. Let's turn the camera, like not down, but like, you know, you can have a better view. So there's a couple of pieces that I think go to either maybe Steffi Love or Petra. Um, or maybe the 90s uh, Zindi produced by Hasbro. So I always kind of think of, of Zindi, etc. Often also Petra uh, when I got these super bold colors. So this one, I guess, um, I think this is Steffi Love. I have a similar one. I just thought this is cute because I have one like top that is too short to wear it as a dress. So I thought I might pick up these pants and I saw there's another piece. So I think this is Steffi Love, but definitely like 90s. Um, then I have these ruffles, super neon. Uh, this one definitely goes to a 90s um, Zindi by um, Hasbro. So this is from the uh, Popstar Zindi. So it's kind of the skirt. And here's something very similar that I guess might also go to a Zindi then probably. Uh, this is from Petra. This is a um, outfit or the outfit that goes to the talking Petra. So uh, there was a Petra, same as, you know, Teen Talk Barbie. Petra did the same. Uh, she had a couple of phrases. So this was her dress. Um, then I picked up just, I don't know where this is from, but this is like a melon <laughs> purse or a melon handbag. I couldn't resist. It's just too cute. Um, I think this little um, bracelet or hair piece uh, Barbie had very similar ones but the Barbie ones were always translucent and this one isn't so I guess this is then probably also from Zinni or from Petra from around the same time in the early 90s um, then this dress which I just picked up because I thought oh I am often missing like uh, golden pieces sometimes I'm missing a top a golden top or whatever uh, I, and then I realized 
And it is actually a Barbie piece. I would not have expected that because the fabric feels pretty cheap. So I guess it's 2000s because I have proof now that this Barbie logo, so the one with the 90s Barbie B, but in pink, was still used up until the mid 2000s at least. At least up until 2004, I have proof of a dress that I have that I know which doll it came from. So could be from the 2000s. I just picked it up because, you know, gold, I thought. Cool. Then here is a typical Barbie brush from the 80s. This looks like it is a Barbie brush from the Totally hairline. No, it's not, it's shorter. So I guess this is from a fakey line, a either fakey doll or maybe even fakey pony Simba or something like that. But I like my, uh, you know, combs and brushes for toys. Then where's the other shoe here? A couple of shoes. I picked up one of these. Um, I, I, I often find them. And here I have another pair of uh, purple ones, Barbie shoes from, different Barbie lines. For example, the Beat Blast Barbie had them or the Camp line. Um, these are clearly not 90s, but probably early 2000s. But I love platforms and these are so cool. Uh, although they are not, you know, the typical Barbie era that I like collect, I love these shoes. Um, I picked up, this is just a cool, like very interesting material pants for either Ken or Fred or I don't know what the boyfriend of Steffi was but I think it's the material it's very Petra like but I don't know it's it's kind of changing it is purple and pink or blue and pink which makes this kind of purple it's a very cool piece here I just picked it up because I thought hmm it kind of looks like it could be from the 70s or something maybe it's a best buy but to be quite honest I think it's homemade because of the way it is sewn in the back you know, it's little dungarees, but um, the way it is made, I, I think it's it's not um, real. So here, there's just a big old hole. I don't know. Then uh, I got this. I just think this is probably a Petra skirt. Nicely made, cute design, um, not Barbie. But the one of the best pieces, there's another one, is actually this. Oh my gosh, finally I have the top for Secret Hearts Barbie. I do have this doll, I have the skirt for the longest time, I have this doll on display, etc. But I never had the top to it, I always just had the, the, um, the skirt. Uh, it's, it's one of those Barbies, you know, take something cold and put it over here and then hearts would appear. I mean, you can see the hearts already, but... Uh, finally, I, I, it's crazy, There was the, the, the skirt was not in there, it was really just this piece that I was missing. Uh, now I can finally put it on the doll and be happy. So Secret Hearts Barbie, it's from, she's from 1992, such a beautiful doll and ah, this was one of the best finds. And actually another very small but mighty find, yes, totally hair Barbie, this is one of the like a lot of the um, accessories I don't have yet, but this is one of the missing accessories. So this is, it's actually kind of like a um, bootstrap, <laughs> honestly, when you look at it, the material and everything, but it's kind of curled. So you would be able to, I don't know, make a cool hairstyle with it. Let's try it on a pony or something. It's really like, ooh. You know? something like this I mean if you would put it through the whole thing then it would make like a palm hairstyle um, yeah but this is for totally hair Barbie and you know I have this doll now finally and I have a have outfit and I get even get more and more pieces to it it's another piece so happy with this little lot of fashion pieces so yeah this was maybe not really the biggest like all I ever had, uh, no doll, a couple of like pony items, um, you know, G2, we had a G1 pillow, we had a little bit of fakey stuff, maybe these Lady Lovely Lock shoes, uh, some cool Barbie fashions, cassette tapes, so, and, and, and you always have to consider that this was kind of the Sunday of the super exciting Barbie find on uh, Saturday, so for me it kind of still felt like this was a very, ex like very, very good uh, flea market weekend. Although the, the Sunday was didn't have the biggest finds, but like 
I was still so thrilled, you know, even though these little fakies, they make me very happy. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Tell me anything in the comments down below. And if you're not subscribed, push this subscription button there and next to it then the bell if you if you want because that helps you to um, get notified when I upload new videos so it's the notification bell um, uh, I personally for example just just saying I am on YouTube all the time not just as a creator but also as a follower of so many people so I don't use this bell notification thing because I am in my subscription feed all day long all the time which people have uploaded new stuff but if you're not one of those people and you just follow a, a youtuber here and there then it really makes sense to push the notification bell because then you get a separate notification that hey now sky painter has uploaded a new video so yeah I hope you enjoyed all of this and uh, we see each other in the next video so see you real soon and may the toys be with you. Bye!